Lorraine here and we're in the main auditorium here at the Orange, Orange Hospital Main Theatre. Just done a general introduction of the team that we're working with, Ingrid and Marie and Ash, who is our falls coordinator. Now, it's, it's my um, uh, privilege now to welcome Adrian Fay, um, who's the executive, executive director of Western New South Wales. What a privilege to have you with us, Adrian, and supporting us today. Um, it's always excellent for us to have um, leadership at the top to support this program of work that we're trying to do or we're all working towards in keeping people safe and how best we can do that. So um, to have the executive leadership to support that is really important to us. So thank you, Adrian. Adrian is the executive leader, leader with over three decades of experience in Western New South Wales Local Health District. He's in currently, as I've said, the Executive Director of Quality, Clinical Safety and Nursing and has held the role for the last 11 years. So it's a big role, um, very busy person. Adrian's held a number of key positions within the dis district, inclusive of roles in base hospitals, mental health and managing small MPS facilities. Adrian, that's so significant in really understanding the breadth and the, uh, the work that we all do. Adrian's clinical background was in critical care, emergency departments and aeromedical retrieval, which is also a significant part of the work here in New South Wales, in Western New South Wales. With 33 years of continuous service, Adrian has demonstrated effective operational management, strategic leadership and a proven ability to navigate complex rural health services. And we're really mindful of the issues that, and challenges that you face within the rural health, health services. Um, and it, it is some, a topic for our conversation all the time as to how we're more effectively able to support you in the work that you do. Um, Adrian serves as a co-joint associate professor, nursing appointment at the School of Health and Medicine, University of Newcastle, which is a role that is held um, from 2018. So we welcome you today. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Lorraine. Good morning, everyone. Lorraine, you make me sound a lot older than I am with all of that uh, preamble, so thank you. Um, I'd like to start off by an acknowledgement to country today, if I can, and I'd like to additional custodians of the land that we meet upon today and remind everyone here that we live and work on Aboriginal land and country every day. I'd also like to acknowledge the Aboriginal elders of this community who have passed and all Aboriginal people who may be attending this meeting today. We gather today on the grounds of the Wiradjuri Nation, and it's one of the oldest population groups in New South Wales and one of the second largest in the country of um, living living and maintaining our lifestyle out here for more than 40,000 years. We're in the shadow of the great Mount Canobles here today, which is a, a very important and spiritual place for the Wiradjuri people of um, Western New South Wales. And the Wiradjuri people are known as the people of the Three Rivers. And of course, um, we're bounded by um, the, the Macquarie in Bathurst, the Lachlan out towards Forbes, uh, and the Murrumbidgee down to the south. So I think it's important to acknowledge that we are on um, Wiradjuri Council today and pay my respects personally to Elders past, present, and those emerging. It's really an honour to be here today to open the conference and thank you to Dom and to Nat from uh, my team have put a few notes together to keep me on track and save me from tripping over. Also, I've just seen that they've written a one-liner in which I didn't see before, tripping over. <laughs> Seriously, ladies. Okay. So on behalf of the Western New South Wales Local Health District, I'd like to uh, welcome the Clinical Excellence Commission who have been fantastic partners with us for a number of years and great to see you again, Lorraine, and all the work that you've done is quite remarkable. The New South Wales uh, Health Falls and Healthy Ageing Network, and I'd like to personally acknowledge all the presenters and guests who've taken the time to come here today. And we've got a number of people who've joined us locally in the room here in Orange, and, and also thank you for those who have joined us online. Uh, so the Clinical Excellence Commission and the New South Wales Falls Prevention and Healthy Ageing Network support two of these rural-based forums each year. And we are so fortunate to be chosen in Western New South Wales and Orange today to be um, the, the host of one of these visits. So thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a great honour to hold this symposium here in Orange today. As we all know, and I, I know that I'm preaching to the converter today, falls are a terrific problem for us occurring at all um, ages across our spectrum. And some of the latest data tells us that up to 30% of the people who uh, live to be over 65 years of age or greater will have a fall and some of those people will fall at least annually, which is 
a pretty terrible thing to consider. And the number of falls and falls-related injuries, and we see some um, catastrophic harm from some of the falls that we, we see and treat across the system, that's only expected to uh, increase as we see, of course, an ageing population, a lot of comorbid uh, clinical conditions, a lot of the polypharmacy. Um, we got any pharmacists in the room today? So a lot of polypharmacy that are they're actually iatrogenic uh, links to, to falls and increasing frailty across the network of people that we that we care for. In Western New South Wales, we've got um, a fairly proud tradition of monitoring falls closely for a number of years. And whilst we've seen an overall jump year on year in our falls across Western New South Wales at a rate of around 5%, we have a really good reporting culture and we haven't had any increase in incidents of serious harm related to falls. So whilst we're acknowledging that we do um, have an increase, and a lot of that is across our smaller multi-purpose services, some of it in our residential aged care, but also in large facilities where um, we're standing today. But um, we're pleased to say that um, the, the incidence of injury um, isn't actually increasing. So there's a lot of things that we can do to actually contribute to decreasing the amount of falls. And today we're going to hear from a number of people who, sh who will showcase to us some strategies and work that they um, have in play around falls management. You'll hear a lot about standard five from the National Standards Comprehensive Care and how important that is uh, to guide us in the work that we do in the falls reduction space. Um, the comprehensive um, care uh, minimising the harm model places a really safe approach on managing older people. And I know that Renee from our team will be talking to you today around how do we cater specifically for older people who we have in our care. We have some of the largest congregation of multi-purpose services in the state here in Western New South Wales, and we have to balance out our falls management strategies against the dignity of risk, which is often sometimes a difficult thing to do and to, to get right. Uh, we're, very, um, we're very appreciative today of some of the guest speakers um, who will be here to join us, and um, Professor Lord, who I've met earlier today, thank you for coming to join us. It's a privilege to have you here. We're really looking forward to hearing you um, sharing with us. And of course, Lorraine, uh, one of the statewide experts and has been well well known for so many years across New South Wales Health, across CEC. Uh, it's fantastic to have you here. And please, in the breaks, make avail some time to speak with Stephen, speak with Lorraine, and really share your ideas and get some advice. I think it's great to have um, this type of presenter here today for us. And, and locally, we've got a number of people who are doing some great work. And today is about acknowledging that work and, sh and indeed sharing some of the great work that's that's happening ar around um, health, healthy lifestyles, early intervention, um, and where do we where do we intervene? Community programs, how do we make a difference? We're looking forward to uh, some practical demonstrations I hear today as well. And there may be some, indeed some, uh, some music and some dance and some drumming which are associated with healthy healthy lifestyles. So everyone get a bit loose and limber up and get ready um, because there's going to be an opportunity to participate um, in a different way through the forum today. Before I do hand on to the next speaker, I think we have a unique opportunity to connect as people who are passionate about falls, who've taken the time to be here either physically today or online. You have an opportunity to connect in a real visceral way around we need to do something differently in this state around falls reduction strategies and visceral connections with our very large workforce, a uh, number of registered, non-registered clinicians who work across New South Wales Health is sometimes difficult to gain. I want to share with you my own visceral connection uh, to, to a fall scenario. And a number of years ago when I worked in a general hospital um, and of course, I'd been accustomed to patients falling in our care. I saw a patient fall right in front of me in a medical ward in one of our hospitals. And it was a fall that we contributed to. So it was a, a, an elderly fellow who had a level of confusion, who was attempting to mobilise to the bathroom. And for those of you who work in hospitals, you know that just after breakfast, people are fed. They need to use a bathroom. It's the busiest time in our units. And there were lots of bells call bells ringing for support and assistance. This fellow who needed to go to the bathroom. Staff were unable to get to this man. And he attempted to take himself to the bathroom. Um, he was, and I could see him as I approached the corridor, I could see that he wasn't steady on his feet. And as I started to walk towards him, he had a, he had a hold on a handrail. 
uh, down the side of the ward. Unfortunately, in the melee of a medical ward in a large hospital, one of the cleaners had moved a, a linen trolley approximating the rail. And um, as I started to move towards this fellow, I saw him let go of the guardrail and try to step out and around the trolley. And as he did that and I couldn't reach him, he fell right in front of me and I will never forget his pain and distress. And from then, I think that was my visceral connection and I went on to be a director of nursing in that hospital. That was my visceral connection of we can prevent a lot of what we see. We need to do things differently and we need to enable ourselves to lead in this space. Finally, when we come to these types of symposium, I often call out to the people who are present, what can you do when you leave this space today to make the environments that we work in a safer place? So please take the time to think about what you are doing, what you can do, and what you may be able to do to contribute further. So it's a call to action to you. I know that when I come to a symposium like this, I furiously scribble down notes and I listen to presenters and I take down good ideas and I bring them back to work and I have conversations about them. But sometimes I fail by not taking those conversations further and make sure that I'm acting on some of those things. So please today, it's a call to action to you to think, how do we make a difference? How do we empower more people to lead in this space? And I thank you for all of the work that you do. This is a fantastic health district to live and work in. And I thank you for all of the contributions that we make and I look forward to catching up with you over the course of the day. Um, thank you for the honour to open the symposium. Thanks so much, Diane. Thank you, Adrian. That was great and some really you know, pertinent points there in terms of the prevention we can do and, and that classic scenario of having to watch a patient fall. It is something you don't ever forget. So my name is Ashley Wright, for those who I haven't met, and welcome to everyone virtually online. Um, I am the Western New South Wales um, Fall Prevention and Management Coordinator, so cover across our huge district. Um, I've been in the role for about 18 months. Um, so I'm just going to, we do have a little bit of time today, so I'm just going to have a little bit of a chat just um, a bit of a background on me for those who haven't met me and hopefully you haven't had me involved in a harm score two or harm score one review because then I tend to know you quite well and I know your facility quite well so I don't ever want to meet you for those reasons but sometimes that does happen. Um, I'm a physio by trade and I've worked across our local health district for the last 30 years in acute, subacute at Orange Rehab. I, I, I was started actually up at Lords, which is now Wollamurra. Um, in procedural and district um, sites over the last um, last number of years, mainly at Canoundra as a clinician and then community health manager. So I have worked in a lot of different places, so that always helps going out to sites to have that little bit of an understanding. Um, but my role really is to support all of you facilities and people across our district. I'm not the educator. You have a fabulous set of educators. I will work with the educators, the nurse managers and individual falls champions. Great to hear, hear a new one on board from Grenfell um, who's here today because um, it's really important that we actually have people that are focused not just on falls but really on comprehensive care and care for the older people and, and really trying to reduce all of our risks. They're all a falls risk, you know, pretty much 100% of our residents um, and most of our acute, you don't come into hospital for a holiday. Most of our acute um, people are a falls risk for whatever reason. So having the discussions around, yes, there are high falls risk is really not very effective. What we really need to look at is what are their falls risk? Are they the polypharmacy? Are they, is it their footwear? Is it their poor gait? Is it their cognition? What are we actually doing about it? So we know, you know your, your patients, your residents, your community members. You can look at them and clinically go, well, they're walking badly. Obviously, they either need someone with them or we need some strategies in place straight away. So it's really about linking that and making that much more useful rather than just risk assessing to death, um, as our EMR systems tend to make us do. Um, what, is, what does that actually mean? So when the evidence is your, your falls prevention, straight, your falls risks, and what are your strategies that you're actually doing about it? That's where we've really got ahead to in the district. Is it the clear corridors that Adrian was talking about? Because it's, 
you know, in our tight, busy wards, the space is tight, um, storage is often poor. Is there someone actually going around and reviewing that stuff and do we need all that stuff? Does it all work? You know, is the, the, the computer, the wow, the workstation on wheels, is it actually functioning or has it just been sat there waiting waiting for um, a repair job and it's in the process of taking up space and affecting that bed rail that that resident or patient can't get to. Um, so in terms of the other stuff I do other than supporting the facilities is the harm score two reviews, which we've changed over this year in the last 18 months. And we do now meet with sites and really go through and try and get the team on board and analyse what's going on and do some recs that are really relevant to that fall. And it's all about, it's not about blaming anyone, it's all about preventing that next fall in the same sort of scenario. So we really look at what are your processes and what can you do to actually improve so the next person who walks or wants to go to the toilet or whatever it is, you've got some processes in place with toileting plans or behavioural support plans. So we look at that in terms of the harm score two reviews. And I think it's been a really good process to be involved, Not as I said, not that you ever want to be involved for that reason, but sometimes it happens, um, to look at some of those processes. Um, the other thing I do do across the district, and obviously we've had some travel restrictions with budgets, um, is some site visits. So in my acting and time as, um, as uh, in the actual role, um, I've been out to every site now except Condoblin, so I'm just waiting to go out there. So at least I know most of the facilities set up and lay up. I'd love to spend more time out there because often it's not enough. You know, it's pretty hard to come in for five hours, do a clinical ha uh, bedside handover, um, talk to the staff, get to know a bit, do a bit of education, look at EMR, do those things, and then off I go again. But then it's up to the sites and you guys to actually look at changes. So one area that we, we don't, we do tend to seem to focus a lot more on inpatients, but what we've really got to look at is our community falls. <laughs> so I've got Sandra at the back there going, yeah. <laughs> um, because our population has got more comorbidities, they're ageing, we are keeping everyone alive for longer, which is wonderful, but there's a lot of issues that are coming with that in terms of frailty and when you can start. So when you start losing your balance at quite a long, young age, when you start using your losing your bone density at quite a long, young age, what are we actually doing about this way, way back before they presenting as a 75-year-old to ED with a fall? So what programs have we got? And I think, you know, often the health budget goes towards more inpatients and residential aid, but we really need to go, what are we doing out there and how do we get people engaged? Because, you know, the dance-wise, and if you look at the inspiration around that, um, it's fun because often fall prevention or staying upright is not that much fun. So how do we engage people more? Because you can't take a pill to make you stronger. You can't take a pill to increase your nutrition. You've actually got to do that range of things that is the whole challenge of exercise across our lifespan. So if we can have really think about what are you doing in your community? So there's, there's people online who are, and here that are, are in that space. Um, we need to start looking at more falls because they're one of our highest reasons for presentations to ED. And what are we doing in ED? So one of the things that we did last year was um, look at what happens when someone comes to ED from a falls point of view, and it's very minimal. So we looked at 13 sites and looked at who actually got anything in terms of some sort of risk assessment for falls. And of those 13 sites, which included the three bases, 5.72% um, was the average across the district. So if we're not even, and we, I, we get it, like you come in there because you've done something else or you're in pain, if you're not even thinking about what are those comprehensive care factors, let alone putting a plan in place so they don't fall in ED, let alone putting a plan in place for when they go home, have you actually done anything about talking to them about any of their falls risk? Because we know the evidence is if you educate the patients and their family and you educate the staff, that will help reduce the falls. So there's a lot of work to be done in the ED space, 
Ingrid is going to be on another working party because we know that's a space from a statewide point of view, um, that there's not a lot that prevents falls in ED, but there's, there's two things, there's falls in ED and there's falls to ED. So what are we doing when we actually meet that person that's had that fall or is a falls risk factor? So have some thoughts about that if you can. Um, that would be great. Um, so um, pretty much I'd also like to say, if we do run out of time today, which is often the case, um, I'd just like to quickly, and Adrian's already thanked you, so I won't go into too much, the CEC for their support in the Rural Falls Forum. We're very lucky to have you. The New South Wales Falls and Age Healthy Ageing Network and Neuro, so thank you to Stephen and Stephen um, for supporting this. And they also provided all our lovely morning tea and lunch. Sorry to you virtual people that are attending today. You don't get to eat with us. Um, hope you've got something yummy at your site. Um, I'd like to thank our local health district for hosting this, Catherine Nowland for supporting our use of the lecture theatre, um, and particularly my directorate and particularly my manager, Dom Spork, who's here today, and admin um, Kai Cole has also given us some support. It's, it's been great to have, and it's a really good team to work with. It's a very long name for a directorate. I don't even half the time remember what it is. <laughs> but um, that's what we've all, we're all in that space trying to do some some good changes across the district. Um, I'd also like to thank in the last two days, we've done some great site visits across the district with two reps from the CEC, with Ingrid and Marie. And we started off at VCARE in Dubbo. And VCARE is a fascinating place. There's a little door, there's a, a little laminated VCARE sign on the door at the RFDS. Um, then the next to the um, VCARE sign is Beware of Snakes sign. So that was a great introduction <laughs> for Ingrid from Sydney. Um, VCARE's got these multiple stations and all of these screens up and actually doing all this virtual monitoring and, and plugging into all the sites to give them that support. And it's not something that you see in other districts. So it was great to see that. We then went up to Wallenmurrow, which is was the Lords, and they've got a beautiful site and they're doing a heap of work in comprehensive care. I uh, had some robust discussions around the comprehensive care bedside plan, which they use in acute, um, unlike the RAP care plan, which they use in residential age care. Um, so we'll probably be targeting the nurse manager there to get a little bit more involved in that. Um, then we popped down to Wellington um, Health Service and had a lovely tour with HSM and looked around their facility and saw what they were doing there and went to the Sim Centre. Now, I don't know if any of you know about the Crest Simulation Centre that's been set up in the district. Um, it's There's um, some very real looking people there that can do all these amazing things and you can see their veins. And um, what they're doing is a new grad program where they take in our new grad international, not new grad, international program and they take them for four weeks of intensive training before they get sent out often to MPSs. So it's a bit of a culture shock for them. So they take them, Gabriella and, and um, Paul did some, have been doing some amazing work in that space and rotating these people through and just getting to know what, you know, a bit more outback Australia is. Not that we really think of out here as outback, but further west certainly is, and I'm sure they do as well. Um, after that, we went to Molong NPS and we had a lovely time in Shelley's old, um, you know, or current stomping ground. Shelley's our, our force coordinator from prior years, so it's lovely to see you here, Shelley. Um, and we had a really good chat to Sharon, wherever she is. Was, oh, there you are. <laughs> um, and great to see um, what's going on there, and, and they do some really fabulous work, which you're also going to hear about today. Um, after that, yesterday we popped down to Bathurst and went and spoke um, to people in the medical ward with their MDT round, and that was really good, again, looking at that comprehensive care and what's happening in that space and care of the older person. Um, then where did we go after that? Then we went to Orange Mental Health Drug and Alcohol, 
um, who are really working in the um, Lock and Older Persons Acute Ward, who are really working on falls. Um, we've been involved with doing, we had a whole team approach that had a lot of falls in bathrooms because of the challenges in mental health where you can't have shower screens, you can't have chairs. There's a lot of challenges, the floor, um, with keeping it wet, with it staying wet with falls in bathrooms. And it was really great to see you here at Welcome today, um, to see some changes that they're really starting to implement that aren't, that aren't yet huge cost, but they're really making a difference. And they've got beautiful painted individual door <laughs> colours, which Margaret was um, first to show us. Um, just so people can really identify where they're going and, and making that whole cognition mental health space a lot easier. Um, so, and then lastly, we came across the surgical. So that was our final visit. So it's been great to do the site visits because um, it just gives us a really good, and for Ingrid, um, Marie and Ingrid, just that overview. So some photos will be popping up in various places and I'll share some of those as well. Um, just, just the wide variety that we do have across our district five minutes. Um, I'd also like to um, thank our presenters um, who've travelled, um, the CC reps, uh, Professor Lord and Stephen Fu, our local presenters who initially were a bit um, hesitant to come through. Um, the workload challenges I need to acknowledge every site we go to, whether it's Orange Surgical or whether it's Molong MPS, the workforce challenges are immense. Everyone would love more staff to reduce falls. It's like it's becoming the new normal. Our recruitment team are working diligently trying to do that. And lastly, I'd just like to thank the participants who are here face to face today. It's great to see you and we'll have more pop in, no doubt. And then all the ones that are joining with us virtually as well today. So in terms of your space, I think I've got about three minutes. What I want you to really think about in your space is you know what your, your patients and residents and community members' falls risks are. So what are you doing about it? So if someone walks in there with, you know, pretty average footwear, are you actually having a conversation with them to say, maybe you need to look at your footwear? You know, if they've got cognition issues, are you thinking about their mobility and their supervision? Are you thinking about their toileting and, and what are the reasons they're going to be to be getting up? Are you thinking about your top five strategies and your communication with them and your involvement of the families, which is so important, particularly with those people who've got um, issues with cognition? Are you thinking about the high-risk meds, the polypharmacy? When did they actually last have a pharmacy review with a falls lens on it? And what happens when you add risperidone when they're already on an opioid and something else? What's going to happen in that next few hours when they've not had that? So what are you thinking about? How do you change what you're going to do to really make a difference? And then think about... Try and actually find out, and this will always get reported at your patient safety meetings, your, um, where is your data? We know that most of our falls in our district occur bedside bathroom. So lovely to have a garden and a path. You want that as well. But what are you doing in that space? Are you doing enough rounding for the type of patient that you've got? Rounding is intentional. It's not necessarily hourly. We've got to actually think about what are their risks and what are you checking in that? When you go and check them, what are you actually looking for? So, um, so all of the data actually makes a big difference to what you're actually doing. So if you can actually go home and uh, back to your facilities and think about that, um, all falls aren't just because we don't have enough staff. Other than that, I've probably said enough. Time of falls, location of falls. Um, mobility, supervision and unwitnessed. So if they are having an unwitnessed fall, which a lot of our falls are, a significant percent, 70% of our falls in our district, last year we had 2,127 falls within our facilities, 70% of them are unwitnessed. Um, what's happening in that space? Have you checked that they've got the stuff next to them? Have you checked that their bed's the right height? Have you checked that they've gone to the toilet? Have you done everything that you know you need to do to prevent that fall? So have a think about all that stuff. 